again, uh, QI, not the culprit, because they do recognise that 80% of what they say is probably wrong, but we do our best, don't we? Cherokee was a mutation of Chalagi, which meant those people over there, i.e. foreigners. This possible myth comes from Myths of the Cherokee, which was written by and Mr Mooney. But Mr Mooney wasn't a linguist, spent a lot of time there with them, but seems to have been mistaken about this origin. And again, how do I know? Because the internet's marvellous and you can actually speak to people of Cherokee descent who, who spoke the language, not within living memory, but can trace the language back. The failing in Mr Mooney's etymology is that his assertion that Ivuya was the real name for Cherokees, whereas apparently any modern day descendant knows that, or, or anybody then obviously, knows that that just meant any member of an Indian tribe. And from Cherokee to Apache. Here we have a theory which says that um, it was a word from the Zuni language, and this was the definition I read that meant Navajos, and I thought, well, that doesn't really help me. What do you mean by Navajos? Well, this is from Spanish in a way, as uh, it comes from the Apaches de Navajo, which was their um, tra transliteration into Spanish of the name of the place. Let's go back, let's delve as far as we can. Navajo, we think, means large field. Nava, field, who, valley, field, valley, field in a valley, who knows. Once again, the theory that it's it's not their word, it's another people's word, and it means enemy. Um, Yavapai would be that origin. So you can see what thorny problems this throws up. Bear that in mind, then, as I quickly run through some of the words we do use from these Indian languages, starting with the Algonquin. They give us Eskimo. I'm going to say no more about that. That may be... We'll get a whole video. But how about these classic Indian words? Powwow, tomahawk, totem, wigwam. Going further south, we get to Nahuatl, that gives us guacamole, peyote, tomato, and many, many more, obviously. Quechua, ayahuasca, cocaine, condor. And from the Arawakan language, again, I found this interesting. Barbecue, because to my mind, this was, um, oh, from the Spanish, barbacoa. Well, yes, of course the Spanish imported it. What does it mean? It means a framework of sticks. So there you go. That's kind of logical, isn't it? Another thing that means a framework of sticks, or a wooden frame, on which you roast or smoke meat, is uh, a bucan from the same language, from the Arawakan language. And guess what word we get from that? Bucanea. Again, seemed to me more like a Spanish Latin word. No, it, apparently, as always, and apparently comes from the Arawakan language. Um, as does Cayman, which means water spirit, canoe, hammock, iguana, tobacco, and many, many others. All these languages have given many words. Again, investigate if you're interested. But I'll leave you with one other, which is Chinook. And I only mention this because of the fascinating existence of a language known as Chinook Trade Jargon. The Chinook is the kind of helicopter, it simply is the name of one of the villages of these Indians. But Chinook Trade Jargon is interesting as one of the many, many hybrid languages brought about by the necessity of buying and selling. And before I go, since the Spanish have um, reared their heads in this etymological tour, um, just, to, just to mention the confusing words potato and banana for the English speaker. Potato is patata, but that comes from batata, which is what they would call a yam or a sweet potato. And banana, the banana, the small sweet banana, and the plantain, the large ones more used for cooking in English, banana is platano and plantain is banana. So there you go two little cross etymologies to watch out for.